So that was the first episode of a confession. So the audience just saw the very beginning of this show. They're in for quite a ride. Paul Andrew Williams, the director, uh, Martin Freeman, the star. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so, so yeah, the audience just saw the first episode. How would you describe the ride that they're about to take as a confession progresses throughout this series? Paul? Cool. <laughs> uh, you, you start, man. Um, well, I think it's it, the first episode lays out the bare bones of where we're going to go. I think, in all honesty, it goes to places that I think will surprise and probably shock an audience. It certainly kind of surprised and shocked me when I was reading the episodes as scripts. Um, you know, I, I always say, obviously, that the, the primary um, horror of what goes on in this storytelling is the death of two young women. That is the primary uh, horror of what happens. But a, a second to that is, uh, is what happens to my character, Steve Fulcher, uh, for trying to solve these crimes and trying to find these women. Um, his life and his career takes uh, the kind of turns that I, I hope an audience will be rather shocked by, because as, as all of us as citizens uh, want good, strong, but fair law enforcement. And I think what has happened to him is um, uh, quite shocking, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think people, especially right now, are, are kind of looking for heroic characters who are willing to risk it all in order to do the right thing. And, and that's sort of, I think, what we'll see with, with Steve Fulcher as, as the series progresses. I wanted to start by, by sort of, Paul, I understand that you sort of recruited Martin. You, you approached Martin about doing this. Uh, talk about, uh, it's, all, it's all you, Paul. It's a credit yeah. to you. No, um, basically, I was approached to do this. And um, when reading it, I thought, I know I'd worked with Martin previously, and I thought he'd be great in it. So it was, uh, you know, luckily when you've worked with someone before, if it's not horrendous, you often have their details. So I, bet, I guess it was just a very simple reach out to say, you know, you, I think you might be interested in this guy and his story. And I think I might send him a, 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 a newspaper article about him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, was a link, it was a link to a, a Channel 4 interview. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, to so an interview with him. I mean, he's a, it's a very interesting story and one that's not necessarily widely known. What I think the case itself is well known um, here, but I don't think... Actually, what happened to the, you know, what happened to Steve Fulcher is, or it is now, obviously, but it wasn't at that point known by many people. Yeah. And, and Martin, what was it about the, the story that that sort of intrigued you and, and uh, led you to say, yeah, this, this, is, a, this is someone I, I'd like to play? Well, similarly, as Paul said, you, you know, uh, if, if you have an experience with a director that you enjoyed, you know, that they're, they're, they're always somewhere in your uh, consciousness of someone you might like, cross paths with again. So I've got, got a text from Paul and this link to an interview with Steve Fulcher. And Paul said, Jeff Pope has written this drama. I'm going to do it. I think you could play this guy. And so I looked at the link um, and I thought, well, yeah, I could probably play him. I found out more about Steve Fulcher. To be honest, I didn't really know anything about him. And I, I hadn't actually remembered that case. The case was kind of 2011, 2012. Yeah. And, but the yeah, the combination of Paul, who as a director I really like, Jeff Pope, who's one of our best writers, you know, that was a lovely combination. And and also that, uh, yeah, I was I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked by what was happening, by, by what befell this man, um, for simply trying to do what any of us, any of us would want a copper to do. You know, um, he wasn't going seriously maverick. He wasn't kind of you know, it wasn't he wasn't going Liam Neeson in Taken. Do you know what I mean? He was um, he was <laughs> yeah. doing something that as it transpired, was not dotting every I and crossing every possible T. You know, he wasn't beating someone up in the, at the station. He, you know, it was, um, it was stuff that, to a layman, to a layperson, all of us, I'm sure, watching it would go, well, what he did was completely kosher. Um, so I think what befalls him is, is part of what made me want to, to play it because actors want to play drama and it's dramatic. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, he just wanted to find this woman. Uh, and, yeah. and sometimes by any means necessary. Yes, uh, but it, exactly. But it wasn't by any means, like he wasn't picking indoors. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't kind right. of like it, right. blowing up sort of crack houses. He was, he, he literally, 
didn't take someone back to the, the station when he should have done at the exact second that he should have done. Yeah. And the reason he didn't was because he knew that if he got this suspect in front of uh, a solicitor, in front of a lawyer, he would clam up and there would be no further comment from him. So when this guy, I don't know how much of this is a spoiler and you can edit it, but, uh, but so when this guy says, do you want another one? Do you want another body? I'm responsible for putting another fucking woman in the ground. I, it's, it's pretty understandable that Steve Fulcher said, yes, I do. Take me to it now. Right, right. Uh, and, and so you had a chance to spend some time with the real Steve Fulcher, Martin? Uh, talk, talk I did, about yeah, that. yeah. I, I, think, yeah. I, think, I think Paul had met, I think you'd met him a couple of times, hadn't you? I'd met him, yeah, I'd met him a couple of times. Yeah. He's, and obviously the case had played on his mind for a very, very yeah. long time. Um, I think that one thing you said earlier on about him, you know, about we need heroes and stuff like that. And I think what's interesting is that he's just not a hero. He, he, you know, he was, I, I don't think he, and certainly don't think he did think he was doing anything heroic or, at mm. all. It's just in a way like doing, you know, just doing the the job. I think that's what I just think it's all, you know, I'm also, I'm not sure what the pace laws are in, uh, in the States. Well, it's, the, it's like Miranda, right? In, in... Right, right. You read the right, the rights, yeah, yeah. And then you, uh, and then if uh, you know, they, they can demand a lawyer, and then they can shut yeah. up. You don't have to say another word. And 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 Steve Fulcher, by the way, is a, is a you know when, when you meet him, he's not some you know kick-ass maverick. Like he he he's a very straight copper, you know. Yeah. Um, he he doesn't think to hell with the pace rights. He doesn't. Think, he <laughs> he knows that they're there for good reason. Yeah, because you know there are bent coppers, and there certainly were more than there are now because of these rules and regulations. And I think most sane people want these rules and regulations. Um, but Steve's um, Steve's standpoint, I guess, is if you can tell me what I should have done in that second that's different, please God tell me, because I don't I don't know what else I should or could have done in that in that second. Um, he's, I, I see him as an essentially decent person. He came down to set a couple of times. I met him during rehearsals. Uh, we all had a chat. Um, his family came down, uh, you know, the, the, it's obviously, it's quite a, a wound to him. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think this has helped in some degree in, in sort of watching this? Has this been, uh, in, in, in talking to him, do you think maybe he's sort of I going don't know. Through... I, I hope so. I, I mean, Paul might know different. I, I, I think he, I think when he watched it. I think it just just reiterated how unfair it was and how, um, you know, kind of crazy that situation was. But it's like anything when you are, you know, when you're doing the right thing and there's just injustice, which is just which everyone can see is ridiculous. Um, it, that's very hard to get over. Obviously, not as very different to losing a family member, um, but it is. You know, it is a form of grief as well, but it's obviously it's very different. But um, yeah, what, what is that like to have uh, the actual person who you're doing a a series on there on set, uh, and, and sort of knowing in the back of your head that you're portraying someone who really exists, who is eventually going to watch mm -hmm. this? Uh, yeah. does, does that mess with your head at all? Does that sort of change anything, or, or how does that impact filmmaking? I, don't, um, I, I think we try to make it impact it as little as possible because obviously we just have to tell these stories uh, or, or this story in these episodes. Um, you're very mindful of it. I mean, it's the first time I've done that. It's the first time I've played someone who's actually come to set and watched. I, I think that's the first time I've ever done it. Um, so it does focus your mind a little bit. But at, at the same time, by that time, by the time you're filming, you have revved up to playing this part anyway. And hopefully you have done a bit of homework and preparation anyway I, I think once i'd met him i i gathered that he was happy that i was doing as in it you know it has the whole thing had his blessing i think um and i think it, I'm, i imagine he just was probably relieved that the public can see sort of how it unfolded yeah yeah i mean i think it's weird for both the you know because the family members um uh, of, of the victims yeah. also came to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I think for them as well, rather than sort of worrying about how someone's portraying them, I think it's just the surreal, uh, you know, how surreal it is. The, what your life essentially is being, you know, out there with, and obviously film sets are very, aren't the TV. So you've still got, you know, people eating sandwiches 
while they're um, chatting about crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in particular, wanting to also honor these these two women who died. Uh, mm. I, think that, I suppose spoiler alert. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I, that's yeah. remains. But I think that's that's why I always, you know, whenever I'm asked about it, because obviously. You know what happened to Steve Fulcher is is bad and ongoing. You know because he's still not working in uh, in the UK. He's still, as far as I know, I think Paul he's, he's still working abroad. You know he yeah, still can't to, pardon the pun. He can't get arrested in the UK doing his job. So that's awful. But it's yes, there's families who have lost, you know, young family members uh, in the most brutal, awful circumstances. So yeah, the real tragedy belongs to those families, obviously. Um, this and Steve is, wouldn't argue that in any no, way. No, whatsoever. I mean, only a crazy person would. You know, like, young women have been murdered. And, you know, it's it, that's the beginning and end of it. But the, the man who tried his best uh, to bring the man to justice, who he feels was responsible for those murders, has also paid a price. Yeah. Martin, I, I was uh, sort of Googling some of the, co the, the, the coverage, especially in the UK, of a confession. And I saw one interview that you did where you said this was probably the... the uh, most difficult role you've had, or or at least you said that uh, it nearly broke you, I think was a, a clicky quote that I saw in, in one publication. Uh, how, how, <laughs> how, how, I don't remember it nearly breaking me. I mean, I yeah. remember it, I remember being tired, but then you're always tired. Yeah. You know I mean, like, and it was in the winter. So, you know, those kind of, um, you know, short British days, you know, where, where it's dark by half past three in the afternoon. I was, I was very tired. But um, but you're always tired. It wasn't like the Revenant, man. It was no, it uh... wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And I, and, I, and, I, and I, to be honest, I, and I'm not doubting what you've read, but I, I personally, I try to, I try to avoid hyperbolic phrases like that. <laughs> you know what I mean, because it's not uh, a big headline on this. Yeah, one. it nearly it broke, me. broke me. Says Martin Freeman. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> If I ever did say that, I was either joking or drunk. I, I, yeah, I, well, I no, I think the thing is, is there were times, there were, that, that, honestly, there were moments in the show where, in the filming of it, when, you know, you're witnessing, you know, really great actors obviously oh, yeah, doing incredibly yeah. emotional stuff. And that, mm -hmm. I think that no, is also, true. you know, something that is... Um, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I, what I definitely thought and have said several times is... When you are, as Paul says, when you're working opposite very, very good actors, what's a lovely thing actually is you don't have to do any acting. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to really bring anything except your presence and uh, and and to be open to the to the moment. So when if if you are breaking the news to somebody that their child has been lost or rather has their body has been found, for instance, um, and their reaction is as it is, and they are having a, a sort of basically a nervous and mental episode in front of you then um you i didn't have to do anything so i mean like if imelda staunton's doing what she does uh, or siobhan finner and doing what she you know like um a couple of times i thought i i don't want steve now as in for me as an actor i don't want to play emotion right i don't want to kind of start getting all moist eyed and play you know just doing that actor's thing of I'm going to get a bit of crying in here, you know. Having said that, when someone is fucking going, when someone is losing their mind in front of you, um, it's very hard not to lose it a bit. It is. And, and after, you know, certainly after the, the scene um, where Imelda's character hears what's happened to her daughter and hears that her daughter's body has been found, um, there was not a dry eye in the house. I mean, you know, and again, all of that sounds like a very showbiz story and like that, you know. Imelda was also just doing her job extremely well you know but when someone makes those animal noises um and is that hurt i was looking around at every fucker i mean everyone was pretty stunned by it because it's not a nice thing to be it's not a nice thing at all but in that way uh, that broke me i suppose you know like in those experiences oh uh, we got I the quote get, we yeah got yeah the, exactly that's you. how you get the quote but that you know that that i got very emotional because but i didn't even want to you know, yeah. that wasn't me trying to do a number as an actor. It's like, you know, you're just reacting to what you're being given. And uh... But I think in the scene, you see that. I don't think, I think it's, it feels very, you know, how I, how, how I would imagine someone delivering that news has to be. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you know, are affected by it, obviously, but having to remain. And 
Paul, that's something that uh, you know, there, there's a hallmark of, of these great British crime dramas. And, and you worked on Broadchurch as well. Uh, what What is it about sort of the, that, that genre that you know, there, there's a real sort of emotional element? I mean, the, the, the British crime dramas are sort of a unique almost genre of their own. How, how would you sort of describe that, that specific kind of show that, that you've worked on in the past? Well, I mean, this, you know, what made this show... I think very important was the fact that it was a true story. So it was based on real people. So what happened, it was incredibly well researched. So what happened was, you know, actually did happen. And, you know, I think that again, with this, it was all about the, uh, you know, the other characters. It wasn't, it was about the crime to a degree, but actually it was about the effect it had on everyone involved from the victims to the police. And I think that's what made this different in a way, because I think it was very real. I think there are a lot, you know, the British crime dramas, you know, a lot of them don't need to, don't really push the reality um, uh, of crime, of murder, of horrible, horrible things, because, you know, it is a form of entertainment. You know, you look at Murder, She Wrote, you know, it was brilliant, but I didn't believe it happened. Um, whereas things like A Confession and, you know, and other shows, uh, where you're right, I, you know, I believe this and I genuinely am emotionally invested into it, where there are a lot of it, a lot of other shows actually are about who done it. And this one wasn't. And this is why I think this one was special. But also, weirdly, I think that the, the tone of this in the writing and the directing and the shooting of it, and to an extent in what, you know, what the acting, and the acting, and, and, acting and, and ending department as well. But the general tone of it was, I think the emotion comes from the the lack of emotion in the show. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not full of histrionics. It's not, you know, no one's, there's no explosions, there's no car chases, there's no great kind of award-winning monologues where someone says, I'm going to take this guy down. There's none of that, right? We, my job, I, I, as I always felt, my, you know, me and Paul talked about this briefly, you know, we went for a coffee before and sort of said, our job really is to get the hell out of the way. Get out of the way of it. Don't do any acting, don't do any of that shit because the story is enough on its own and hope you know I, I really hope that um and i know it i know it has done in the uk i know it's worked in that because i got i was getting messages from people who i haven't got messages from for years actually about it um people were very very affected by it because the story is extraordinary enough without the director or the actor or the writer layering on their craft do you know what i mean in, in a way you've got to sort of get out the way you know and, and let and let the story do it you know yeah, which is why it makes it feel even more real. Because yeah, yeah, and if it feels more real, then I guess you'll be quite emotional if it if it affects you. you know. Yeah, I, I wanted to go back real quick to the two of you because you worked together on the Eichmann show. That that yeah. was the, um, and, and obviously you remain tight. You guys even still dress alike. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, we're in the same band. Yeah, we should have we should have <laughs> spoke about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You, you have your coronavirus beards going. So yes, um, yes. talk a little bit about your relationship and, and uh, sort of how you work together. What, what, uh, how, how do you guys sort of uh, jive on set? Well, I quite we... like Paul's... Uh, I'm, I'm going first. I quite like <laughs> Paul's... Uh, he's a, he's a, like a notoriously no-nonsense person, you know. Like if he likes what you're doing, he'll definitely let you know, but he, he won't let you know for longer than eight seconds. Do you know what I mean? It's, there's never going to be, mate, that was just, you know, it's just like the most you'll get is, yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. And so I think I quite like the straightforwardness of that. And then if he doesn't like what you're doing, he's pretty smart actually at, at f finding a way that you can make it better. Because Paul was an actor before as well, you know, so he's got, he's still got that bit of actor's brain that, that knows how do you actually get from A to B rather than just this mystery of something that actors do. He's sort of, he's been one, so he sort of, he knows a bit about it. So well, apart from that, he's just, he's quite funny. And uh, as you see, um, quite, uh, <laughs> quite, quite a uh, joker. No. Yeah. Do you know what? I think that it's interesting because, you know, I watch Martin in, in his new show as well. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, in terms of his craft is very clear um to see or is it you know his ability but i think what was interesting on this job and different to uh the eichmann show is that you know as we as martin said earlier we sort of agreed about a no acting approach and just you know just doing what you know what was there and 
so in a way there's the, the you know, there's not that there is not a clear right way and a clear, you know, there's lots of clear wrong ways, I think, to do it. But there wasn't a clear way of improving how we just speak normally. Do you know what I mean? So I think um, it's often with actors, they want to keep doing it different, keep doing it different and thinking they're going to do it better. But I'm actually like, well, you know, you've just said done this scene, which is not a massively expressive scene. So what else are you going to do? And and I think that, you know, I think Martin was rela uh, was comfortable enough in what he was doing, apart from gloves and driving, um, that he was um, willing to do what he did and not worry about it and not, and not strive for something that wasn't there to be yeah. striven for. If that's right. for yes, but, but also that you have to be, you have to trust, you have to trust the person saying we've got it. You know what I mean? So, because if you do a take and you think, I really want to do that again, and very often I want to do it again. Very often I want to do things again because I think, A, I like it because it's fun. And B, because I always think, as most people do, you can do better. Um, but so when someone says, no, we don't need to, we've got it. Usually you're thinking, you're, you don't really think that. It's just because we're up against the clock and, you know, you, you would, you'd love to do it again, wouldn't you, if you could. But actually, you know, Paul has a quite, a, again, a direct um, three-syllable way of going, no, we, we got it. We got it. And so I think you just you have to believe the person telling you that, and I and you do you believe you believe Paul because he doesn't he doesn't bullshit you either way. He doesn't bullshit you and go, oh my god, you're amazing. But he also he doesn't he, you know he never depresses you <laughs> with what, if you've done something bad, he won't go, my god, that was awful. <laughs> he will you know he will at least try. Yeah. But what's interesting is that you know, but when you've worked with an actor who knows what they're doing, and even if they don't know. Or, and I don't, or I don't know exactly what's going on at a certain uh, moment. When you have someone say, "Actually, I think this is the wrong way," Look, you know, because I need actors to tell me that they don't think it's right, and they think that what I'm saying isn't isn't right for the scene, and to throw ideas to me. And that whole thing really should be a collaborative um, thing because I don't know everything, and you know, I don't think Martin would say he knew everything, but together we might know more. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> might know more. <laughs> They were, they were, That's they were. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Paul actually mentioned Breeders, which is uh, another Martin Freeman show that's that's on right now. Which, by the way, that show, whenever I scream at my kids, it makes me feel okay about myself because you know Martin Freeman said it was all right. <laughs> I, I hope, apart from the fact that we want you know that we want it to be an entertaining show, yeah. there is also yeah. part of us. Uh, that genuinely hopes it's as in, in its own minor way as a sort of public service <laughs> as well for yeah, parents yeah. not to feel like they are dreadful, dreadful people if they, you know, go off at their kids. Now, this is not a new concept, you know, like p parents have always gone off at their kids and it's been fine up until the last 10 minutes of history where it's all of a sudden, you know, you can be brought before the, you know, the Hague for crimes against humanity if you, <laughs> if you dare to <laughs> shout at your kids. But, um, you know... I think it's swearing is the great thing because I swear all the time. Yeah, me too. What's interesting is my children don't swear. My child mm. does not swear, my 12-year-old. Right. right. And it's very anti-cursing. Really? Yeah. But and I think that's because he's heard me saying so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're doing a public service, so so I thank you. Uh, so so speaking of that, I've got a couple of fan questions. And, and one, Martin, I mean, and, and this is true. When, when I see that Martin Freeman is going to be in a project, I say, oh, this is going to be good. I, I should check this oh. out. I think Thank you've gotten to the point now where you've made so many good choices from Fargo to you know, the, the Marvel movies, uh, to, to the Breeders, to this, to, of course, Sherlock, uh, that I know I'm going to be in for something good. Uh, so, so I've got a fan question for you. What are your dream roles? What, le what is left for you to conquer? What, what would you like to do next once we're allowed to go outside again? Uh, the, the truth is that uh, I, I don't really have a long list of things that are already existing in the world that I would like to do. I, what I love is things like getting a text from people like Paul and going, hey, have you, what about this? You know, I, li I like the unknown and I like um, being surprised. And I, I end up doing things sometimes that I think, oh, I didn't know I wanted to do this, but I'm really glad it, it came along. You know, I also want to, you know, I'm going to be behind creating generating work a little bit more you know i'm not going to become cecil b demille and become a you know a great producer but i'm going to i'm going to 
please God, uh, we'll all be allowed to go out again. But yeah, I want to do that more where I'm where I'm at the on the ground floor of the creative process. That's something that I enjoy. I like I like having a vote. You know, I, you know, I, I, it's nice having an opinion, but people don't have to listen to your opinion. <laughs> so it's, it's nice having a vote at the table. And I, and I enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that that is that seems like something yeah, you're doing more of uh, with with yeah. Breeder, for example. Yes, and um, there's a show that's going to come out on the BBC, or well, come out. We'll, we'll do it one day, hopefully, called Responder. Uh, that I'm doing, that, I, that, that, I'm, that, is, that is being written at the moment, and the BBC are going to do. And I'm sort of, you know, I'm one of the execs on that. And it's, um, yeah, that that stuff is really good fun because you get, you get to have a voice on on who you work with, and I really like that. Paul, question for you from a fan. Uh, talk about sort of the difficulty level of, of doing a confession. Was there a moment that was proposed some sort of challenge that you are, are proud that you pulled off? Or was there anything in particular that you thought was more challenging than, than something else in, in uh, directing this opus? Yeah. And of course, it's simple. But in terms of like challenges, you know, obviously time, money, you know, trying to get fit everything in, struggling without the maximum number of extras you want, you know, practical stuff that you have with your job. Um, I still think that there are other things I do in life, like just normal living, that is a challenge. Sort of when working, um, things are, I, I, I think are a bit more straightforward and, you know, I was working with really great people and it was a really good environment and good friendly vibe. Uh, and weirdly, there were a lot of laughs um, between us all. So, you know, actually, it was probably one of the best jobs I've done in terms of the overall sense of enjoyment. And, you know, so, in t you know, I don't I think there are challenges uh, are more are more in normal life than uh, this. But that was this project. And I think Jeff, the writer, was also an exec and he was really great to work with. And he was very open to everyone doing their jobs. And that was very good. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Jeff and, and sort of what uh, sort of your relationship with him was, how the, the collaboration process was with him in turning this from, from paper to, to screen. Um, but, you know, he included, you know, I, he had written the first two when I first uh, said we'd do it. And incredibly collaborative always wanting to check details and stuff like that but what i found very interesting is he's he's very open he doesn't care where the suggestion comes from if it's you know if it's going to help but also he's like me he gets very passionate and then he'll back off and then come then he'll still be passionate and he'll just be very different very um instinctive and but he wants he wants me to direct so he let me direct which is very good because a lot of writers and execs, you know, want to do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So he trusted you, you trusted him. Yeah, sure. like, yeah exactly. I think that's what you have to do yeah. or go yeah. and direct it one or the other. But I think he, um, yeah, he did trust me. So you mentioned that uh, there, there are other challenges than, than necessarily just putting on a TV show. And right now we, we seem to be living through a most interesting time how are both of you sort of adjusting to this this current situation? I, we get to see Martin Freeman's kitchen, for example. Paul, we see your bedroom. I don't know if either of you are wearing pants. I put on pants for this occasion, just for you. <laughs> um, I, it's, you know, um, I mean, I haven't got the toughest life. I think there are, but I think it's. Uh, I'd like. I'd prefer going out. I prefer I prefer playing football. I prefer sort of working in a normal environment. But you know, I think that uncertainty is the is the big stress. Yeah. Mm. How about you, Martin? How how have you been adjusting? What yeah, have you been doing? To, well, to be honest, I always find this it's it's quite a tricky question. Um, yeah. Because I mean, obviously, I understand the question, but but I'm trying. You have to be careful to not be flippant about or glib about the fact that this is life and death for a lot of people and a lot yeah. of people are dying, which is awful. Um, but also not, as Paul says, you know, we, we, we don't have the worst lives and not wallow in, you know, stuff. It's like, no, for me, other than the fact that I want to work and I, and I like going and seeing people in, 
the outside world and I can't do that. So that's a pain in the ass and it's, and it's not great, obviously. And I'm not, you know, we're not earning money, blah, blah, you know, we've got mortgages and all that. Apart from that, in all honesty, if you're lucky enough to have an outside space as I am, you know, I'm doing a lot of reading, which is nice. And I'm doing, you know, I'm just pottering about and hanging out with my kids. It's, it, it's not, you know, I don't want to say I've, I've had worse times because, you know, that sounds like I'm being flipped because I know a lot of people, this is the worst time of their life. But um, I also don't want to, you know, <laughs> compare my experience with a fucking, you know, nurse or whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, we're, I think we're, we're reasonably fortunate, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Which doesn't mean it doesn't suck, man. It is all right. <laughs> you, can, you can admit that yeah. it sucks. Uh, is, is there yeah, anything? Yeah. That, oh, it does, yeah. Anything that you've watched or read recently that uh, you, you would recommend now? Your 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 pick for uh, quarantine uh, entertainment. I have. I've enjoyed Devs, Alex mm -hmm. Garland's yeah. new thing. Uh, I've read. Fleischman is in trouble by Taffy Brodesser Ackner. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You'd I like love it. it that people are going to actually type that into uh, Amazon. Mate. Be like, yeah, I've got to get that. It's good. That's um, yeah. that, 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 that's that's a great choice. I, I know her husband well, so I will. Oh, right, yeah. oh, there you go. Get it. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh. We'll wrap this up, but Paul, real quick, uh, is there any talk of, of uh, another a confession series, perhaps another case, a, another story? Um, not with Steve Fulcher, I think. I mean, you know, there'd be something, I think there's something me and Jeff might want to do together um, in the future. We're working, well, he's working on it right now, but it will be a separate thing. Um, I think... You know, if, you, if you're lucky enough to get a good project and work with good people, then that's fantastic. So you always just want people to hire you, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's well, for me. Fingers crossed. Maybe Martin can just show up and do a little cameo as Steve Fulcher, just walk across the camera in, in series two. Or even anything else. I can I can play anything, Paul. I can do, I know, I, man. I'll play anything. I'll do, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Yeah. I might have a biopic of me where yeah. I, uh, I yeah. might get to do Just it. Just wear a hoodie and a beard. And look, I'm yeah. like Paul Andrew Williams. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, guys, thanks so much. Congratulations on the confession. And, and don't forget for folks, uh, subscribe to BritBox, six ninety nine per month. You can see a confession and all sorts of stuff. It's on basically every device that you have. So thanks again, Paul and Martin. And uh, cheers and, and uh, good luck uh, as we... Very much continue through all this. Thanks. You too. Stay well.